replacement uh, therapy. We know that in 2014, he started complaining uh, for pains uh, in uh, their uh, chest area, and uh, its uh, tumor was found. A biopsy uh, was carried out, morphological study. Uh, showed uh, that it's differ uh, differentiated squamous cell carcinoma of esophages, uh, uh, dysphagia now, and uh, uh, he visited several oncological clinic, and uh, then in April 2015, he was uh, brought here CT. We can see thickening of esophages, wall 10 centimeters, starting from the uh, thick thoracal area. Uh, but uh, uh, the area of the crush, uh, crust of diaphragma, there are no infiltrations, so we can see that uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, cancer of uh, the thoracic area of esophages. Uh, 30 centimeters here, you see uh, it's the beginning of uh, this uh, tumor. It st uh, starts spreading uh, for three-fourths of lumina. Then it's uh, a circular spreading. Uh, it's the second and third picture. And uh, problems with uh, uh, diaphragm and barrette uh, area is uh, obvious here. Biopsy was uh, taken from here. You can see the line of epithelium at which we worked. And the scopic uh, ultrasound. Uh, three uh, pictures, uh, top left one. Uh, you can uh, see a uh, uh, lymph node that is changed. Uh, obviously, then you can see to the right how the tumor is penetrating the wall, including muscles uh, and um, adventist tissue. And uh, the uh, black part, it's uh, aorta, and the tumor is uh, uh, seen quite clear. Uh, it's uh, a more whitish color, so we can uh, think about connection between the tumor and the aorta. And uh, uh, results uh, allowed us to uh, estimate uh, risk of post-op. Uh, 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 side effects, and uh, you can see uh, the risks here. Taking into account all the above said, the patient can be characterized as a patient with a squamous cell um, carcinoma of the esophagus. So you can see the clinical staging here. And uh, he was refused the no adjuvant radiotherapy because of the possible ingrowth uh, into the aorta. At the moment, the current surgery will comprise four stages, video telescopy with, uh, of the uh, left as a features, then a video dissection in the volume that I have described. And after that, there will be second stage. It's going to be as a uh, phagectomy with a limb dissection. And then there will be laparoscopy. Uh, it will be replaced by lapar laparotomy with the uh, formation of the alter transplant or graft. and. Uh, the last stage is going to be uh, um, anastomosis in the neck. I'm going to show you the anatomic landmarks. We are operating via two ports. So if you have the external picture, then you can see it. In the one port, you have the camera, and in the other, you have the tools. I prefer operating without insufflation. That means that you, I have open troche, uh, the, uh, trochars. And the mini uh, approach, if I need it, I always do it, and if I can't perform it. So the most unpleasant area here, this is the area of the vessel injection. We are going to separate it from the pulmonary tissue, and we shall go to the main bronchus, to the left main bronchus, and see whether there are any problems there or not. Can I have the harmonic? Vadim Grigorievich, uh, despite the fact that you have 2D picture, nonetheless, it's uh, superb. And uh, this video uh, shows all the uh, sophistication of the color 
I actually like Olympus most. And the quality of picture, in fact, is uh, superb. It's really uh, real HD quality. We have this Exir uh, stand. This is the last generation type of equipment. So the quality of uh, translation must be perfect. And uh, generally speaking, I cannot wear specs for this 3D. So that is why. For me, it's some, it would be something that would go in, in just, uh, it would disturb me. It would actually restrict my field of vision. But I do hope that the audience enjoys, is enjoying this um, video translation in 3D as well, because as far as I understand, it's the third 3D type of translation from the operation room in Russia. Let, if not in Russia, then for, for St. Petersburg, it's the first event of this type anyway. This is the area of the inferior lobe bronchus, which uh, goes into the main bronchus. And you can see the lymph nodes are quite uh, well visible because they uh, contain intracourse. And this is, these are uh, um, changed or impaired lymph nodes. If they are stained black, then that means they are not impaired. And if it is white, that actually means that there is metastatic pro process in it. Okay, that's good. You can see the lymph node over there. Dear colleagues, you will have an opportunity to ask questions. We shall be fetching the microphone to you. Kindly tell us, you have mentioned that this non-standard approach, this left-sided, it um, you applied it because uh, you thought that there would be ingrowth of the uh, descending aorta, or ascending aorta. Why are you doing the limb dissection at the moment? As we are inside the chest already, if I do the lymph dissection from the left, it would simplify my uh, the li lymph dissection from the other side. If we had no doubts about the aorta invasion, then we would be performing everything on the right. But at the moment, the approach has already been done. We have, we have already entered from this side. Why not continue the manipulation that would simplify our task further on? And uh, we have not finished the dissection of the most uh, inconvenient part, which is not visible from the right approach. I will demonstrate it to you. You can see the lymph nodes, which are uh, somewhat to uh, somewhat um, to the front from or anteriorly uh, placed. Uh, you can see this is subvein uh, group eight. We have slightly different classification. You can see in the chest, it's a, a maintained type of uh, classification, and the group eight is a paraphysical. Um, vessels, and we should grab it from uh, from the approach uh, from the right. Actually, it would be uh, almost not accessible. And this is exactly the bundle which we could see in the endo uh, sonography, and which our uh, ultrasound specialist decided that it's um, not very nice looking, but it's not changed or impaired. I don't know whether I handled your question or not, dear colleagues. So both demonstrations show us how this strategy of operating changes in oncology. If previously we paid more attention to how much, uh, where the margin is, uh, how to do the anastomosis safely, at the moment the epicenter of the activity is shifted to the lymph dissection. First and foremost, we need to perform the lymph dissection adequately in an adequate volume. Reconstructive stage is not less important, but at the moment this is second line of our discussion already. Most important at the moment is lymph dissection. Now we have separated the lymph node. Uh, let me demonstrate how we use the standard tools. So. And also the surgery by Vadim Grigorievich also very nicely demonstrates the difference of opportunities of endo video surgery. If in laparoscopy we use the uh, pneuma peritoneum, we use the um, different technology uh, like 
here we see the so-called the sills. We have the port additional one, but the major uh, bulk of manipulations, they are done via single approach. It's not the major bulk, it's all manipulations. We don't have another hole, actually. Sometimes we place the camera in the cavity in the area of in the area of the uh, port cuts and via another port we can actually introduce the tools. This is the only variability that we can perform. In this particular patient, apart from all above said, uh, we also have certain inconsistency between uh, MRI and uh, endoscopy. You can see this is the pulmonary artery uh, just in the back. In the background, uh, can you see it? It's um, under the tool. You can see this pulsing substance. This is the left marker of the pulmonary artery. We are going to grab this lymph node. A year ago, similar surgery uh, was performed on the patient being supine and uh, with additional uh, hermitization with sealing. And uh, generally speaking, Vadim Grigorievich uses uh, the tools in his uh, surgery, which are very actually similar to the open surgery, but they have been adapted for telescopy. Yes, these are American tools by Scanlon Company. And they have several articulations. These are tools with double articulation. And uh, maybe the big... Uh, Camera, the bigger camera will show that will demonstrate the tools. We have two, uh, we have two screens now. So one uh, external, another inside uh, the operating field. You can see that uh, this is the tool with a very uh, uh, just uh, very straight, long uh, branch. And uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, you can see you can introduce. It's uh, something like laparoscopy with endo lifting. At the moment, the, the lifting is done uh, in the chest. This is the uh, pericardium and the inferior pulmonary, pulmonary vein, vein. You can see uh, the quality of imaging. It actually allows me to go as deep as I actually need. I go to the mediastrum or closer to the mediastrum. We ask the anesthesiologist to actually put uh, an uh, artery because the patient is after stroke and uh, there is arrhythmia. So this is quite a difficult patient in terms of atherosclerosis. And for us not to run into problems, as uh, in this surgery, we sometimes have very unpleasant compression. Could you hold it for me? We are uh, running very close to the uh, pulmonary uh, vein at the moment. and. Uh, you can see we're very close to the pericardium. I don't know whether you can see it well, but we work very precisely, and it shows so beautifully. And also, we can nicely see the work of the uh, harmonic of the standard bit ligating contemporary technology. Uh, these are the technologies without which we cannot perform such type of surgery. But being honest, there are certain techniques with a monopolar coagulation. Yes, actually, I do envy these surgeons because it happens much easier and faster, and uh, this um, dissection is much easier. In thoracoscopy, we actually have a Chinese surgeon who uh, works on the root uh, by means of monopolar coagulation. You can see how nicely we can perform the dissection in the area of the diaphragm. Uh, from the other side, it would be all very difficult and complicated to perform something like that. You can see we're under the inferior uh, pulmonary vein. Uh, Zhenya, could you change the uh, position of the camera, please? Mm -hmm. 
So, Vadim Grigorievich, if you can, or uh, if you can actually uh, tell us about what is happening, uh, because uh, generally speaking, you can see the pericardium here and the inferior pulmonary vein, and now we are working in the opposite field of the pericardium. You can see we are just uh, working in the uh, in, um, uh, along the vessels, the cranial. Um, actually is uh, above and uh, this is the descending aorta. The caudal end is uh, actually downwards. You can see the landmarks. Can you? Yes, uh, everything is very well visible. That's good. I do hope that you are enjoying this 2D format uh, just like I do. Can I have this uh, uh, other tool which is more curved? Cannot see it well. Can you help me? Yes, thank you. That's not, now it's much better. Perfect. Now we can grab this uh, and uh, pull it downwards. Uh, yes, the diaphragm is somewhat in our way. And uh, there is another port actually. Can we start with the dissection? Aorta. Let's have a look at it. We're going to remove uh, uh, fat tissue along the descending part of aorta. This has been our main task. That's why we use this particular approach. Uh, dear colleagues, you are welcome with your questions. Uh, please show just your hand and then you'll get a microphone and uh, you'll have a chance to voice out your question. Uh, it's uh, the uh, uh, superior upper border of the tumor, 30 uh, centimeters, uh, uh, but uh, CT it's uh, under the bifurcation of one vertebra uh, down. It's mid part of the chest. That's why I would like to see this uh, border from the uh, uh, right uh, bronchus. We have to go a little bit downwards, a little bit maybe more aggressive approach is allowed here. We have to grab more of the fatty tissue. Uh, the phages uh, it's uh, been fed uh, for uh, such bronchus uh, plexus. Uh, sometimes they can be seen. Our patient is uh, quite a heavy guy. So I'll change my I'll change here the position. Uh, please help me with the long. Maybe a couple of words about uh, an aesthetic approaches. To approaches. Uh, we do not uh, use insufflation of the uh, chest, so we have to introduce separate incubation uh, uh, of uh, lungs. And our uh, anesthesiologist was just uh, great, so uh, we used the ar arm, the hand, actually, first, but failed because of sclerosis. It's a epidural block, of course, for it's necessary uh, for such. Uh, epidural sometimes is preferable uh, with a prolonged introduction of uh, uh, anesthetics with the help of a pump. When it's uh, lobectomy uh, thoracic, we prefer a paravertebral one. It's not that invasive. Uh, uh, it uh, gives actually the same effect uh, regarding when it's a uh, one side uh, operation and you do not have to use uh, that much of the anesthetics. Um, and paravertebral local one, we started 
actually immediately at the, at the beginning of the anesthetic procedures and uh, it could reduce the uh, volume of the anesthetics. Uh, as far as I understand that we are uh, together with Mr. Vadim. Vadim, you are on the air. Uh, we want to show you the final picture, the final image of our destruction. Uh, our water is exposed from inside its descending one. Uh, we found the place where we're sure there is uh, no tumor, so it's exposed up to the uh, other side, to the opposite side. Can you see? Y yes, yes. Can you see? Can you see us now? So this inside picture is uh, could be seen. So uh, a water is exposed. Uh, you can see how many nodes of uh, fibrous tissue is left. Uh, this is uh, subaortic uh, space. Uh, Vegas was crossed, uh, crossed through, and then we have this part of healthy esophages. Uh, we go uh, 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 trachea uh, bifurcation zone, and you can see this this descending uh, right grid bronchus. This is uh, bifurcation. This is left uh, major grid bronchus. And then uh, there below, there is the right one. This is bifurcation. Uh, it's intubation tube. Its end could be seen. It ends the bronchus. Yes, we can see it pretty well. And here we can see this clean as a phage, so we can uh, go to uh, the uh, lateral side. This is anterior to the uh, uh, arteria. This is uh, our aortic window. We have uh, grabbed a couple of uh, lymph nodes here, and we are going uh, backwards. Uh, the probe, is it in the esophagus? Yes, it's in the figures. I will show you from the lateral part, from another part. We have completed the tasks we wanted to achieve to complete. And this atrial zone, we want to show to you that there are no problems there in the vein. Uh, the inferior uh, pulmonary vein, it's exposed up to the uh, other opposite side, and then we can see that the uh, opposite pulmonary uh, vein starts running. Lymphodissection is a uh, uh, bilateral full-fledged one, and this is the sense and essence of this operation. Uh, the lymph nodes are on the sample in uh, the area of uh, uh, the tumor. Had it been uh, trochotomy, trochotomy, that's good. You can see this azygous vein. It's not difficult, and um, you can see the vagus very well. This is its pulmonary portion, and uh, can we go uh, downwards? This is our intermediary bronchus. This is the inferior pulmonary vein, and uh, can, can you kindly uh, sweep the camera? To uh, speed up the collapse, we use the hermetical port and the sufflation. I do not do it very often, but in the initial stage, I sometimes do it. In order to uh, speed up the collapse of the lung. We are on air already, yes. Whether you can see the uh, picture well, yes. This is the middle bronchus, this is esophagus. And this is the uh, inferior pulmonary vein. You can see the esophagus here. It is somewhat actually pushed uh, down here by the lung. And we will have to uh, cross the chest duct and clip it. So we uh, always cross the vena azygus because actually it's in our way. And it's much better to cross it twice. In the G, could you kindly get it ready? And the G, 
Inna has brought it over to us. The brown cassette, number 30, if you have. If you don't, then the white. Now, we are going to cross. While they're bringing the cassette to us, fetching the cassette, we shall continue the dissection from here. And from the intermediary bronchus, you can see some group with some lymph nodes. Uh, can I have a harmonic? Can you come closer? Please do. These are lymph nodes which are in the uh, pulmonary parenchyma and that is why we are not going to get mad about it. These are lymph nodes which are under the intermediary bronchus. Can you show it from above? Thank you. You can see it pretty well. It's a margin of the uh, middle bronchus. Can you see it? Thank you. You can see how this lymph node goes under the bronchus. It's not alone here. OK, now we have changed from laparoscopy to uh, thoracoscopy. Uh, and you can see the difference in operating these two new uh, devices, uh, Thunderbeat and the harmonic. Uh, they have something in common, but they work differently, and I think that our specialists, they can consider the details and the sophistication of all these operations. Now we are uh, crossing the pulmonary portion of the vagus. Now you can see very well that the vagus is going to stay there. We are going to cross it like this here. And uh, we are going to uh, leave it there to uh, provide the innervation of our wonderful lung. So you can see surge cell. This is something that we placed from the opposite part, from the opposite approach. Do you see it? Yes, we can see it very well. Now we have opened actually the area which uh, we have already dissected from the uh, opposite part. This is a paratracheal part. So we have um, a question from the audience, from the floor. Judging by the picture, it's uh, left uh, approach. And uh, what about the prone position? It prone position is very good if it allows you to in fact, it allows you to solve 99% of all the uh, questions and issues, and uh, the dissection being one of them. Now you can see the main uh, bronchus and the bifurcation, bifurcation area. This is the li uh, right, and this is the left mainstream bronchus. Now I'm going to uh, respond, uh, come back to this prone position a bit later. Now, you know, in the prone position, uh, there are a lot of advantages. Uh, you don't have to turn the patient, and uh, the bifurca bifurcation area is very good. The blood doesn't get get into your way because it um, pours down. By, but my anesthesiologists do not like um, patients in the prone position first. Second, I have a habit of operating patients it's lobectomy uh, thoracoscopical in this position. You can see this is bronchoscopy. And you can see Evgeny Gennadievich, who has just entered. This is into the bifurcation area. You can see here the tube in the left main bronchus. Can you see it well? Viktor Anatolievich, there is no feedback. Can you say something? Yes, we can see and hear very well. 
you can see that this is bifurcation area which has already been dissected from the pre from the other approach and the main uh, landmark is the surge cell which we have already placed Uh, do you have uh, something he there? Uh, no, it, it, it's not placed very deeply there. Okay. We are going to cross the Azigos uh, Vena, and uh, it will actually allow us the better paratracheal dissection. You can cross it. This Azigos uh, vein can be also crossed by means of clips and uh, also by suture uh, equipment. So the suturing devices is something that uh, we prefer. The distal end, I recommend you to make it as short as possible because otherwise it's going to get in your way. So Vina Azigus has been crossed. Now we have opened the trachea bifurcation area. It's a question what to do with this end. You can shorten it if you want. Can I have a tube thumb? Okay. You can see that is a phages. Uh, you can reach it from here pretty well. You can go. You should go deeper, a little bit deeper. There is another comment from the floor. How many uh, trocars do you use currently? Yes, currently and generally. Usually, I work from two ports. Labectomy is done by two or three ports, and uh, uh, as a features, usually I operate via two ports. Now the external camera. Can you show us the external camera, what we are doing externally? That's good. We are moving upwards. Uh, uh, take care of the lung, please. Uh, can you see the cameras? Yes, we can see the both cameras. Uh, we can see how you proceed working through two ports. Harmonica, please. It's uh, uh, bron bronchoscopy is a parallel procedure. Uh, it's being carried out simultaneously. Would you like to stay in the air or shall we switch? What is more comfortable for you, depending on what the floor wants, uh, what people would like to uh, see to watch. Uh, we're going uh, to start paratracheal dissection. I think it's a very interesting one because thoracic uh, toroscopic procedure allowed to manipulate in the zones uh, when usually, which we usually can't uh, that easy reach uh, through conventional approach. This uh, nervous vagus, and uh, now we leave it a little bit laterally. As a phages, it's the upper third part of the, the uh, as a phages, we have to expose it. Uh, to have uh, the adequate uh, stump. lower. My assistant is just great. His name is Eugene. He great. It's a uh, aperture, this projection, and it's dissection along the vein. to release and uh, the esophages in this zone. It's 
no sound so up aperture of the uh, uh, thoracic area lower closer our task is uh, uh, to move between the trachea and uh, the phages that's why the majority of the surgeons avoid the thoracic upper thoracic area because everything is very dense here, and if there is a penetration from the phages, uh, it uh, goes into membranous, uh, membranous part of the trachea, if there is this uh, growing in process. To, uh, to the right is trachea, to the left it's esophages. The zone, zone where the esophages is intact, uh, there are no problems with the walls, uh, uh, you can see a real flight here from time to time. Uh, it's the highest paratracheal node. And uh, taking it away, A lower and a little bit of uh, deposit of carbon. That's what we saw. Bronchoscopy. You can see bronchoscopy. Do, what do you need it for? Emphysema. Yes, yes, we found found it. And I want to understand, is it its uh, uh, result and consequence of deficiency of airways, for example? Or whether it's uh, because of some lesion in the airways, so, or just because it's a big a result of big dissection on the uh, other side uh, in uh, the, uh, in the uh, mediastinum. We found out that the synthesema closer, closer, please. Closer and lower. Uh, pardon me, pardon me for keeping silence half a second I'll ask a question I'll ask my assistant probably what I have seen I saw you were in the tracheal end when I saw you in the great uh, bronchus closer So no, no defects, no lesions. Great. Thank you very much. Our endoscopic specialist, uh, Mr. Eugene, has just said that he can't see any uh, lesions, neither in, in uh, bifurcation uh, area nor in trachea. And it's good news, because uh, it could be a result uh, of my, my work or just work of somebody else. Intubation, and you know such two lumen, double lumen intubation gives such consequences. Lower.
Uh, we are going to change the uh, position of the instruments and we'll start moving towards the uh, lower third part. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's two a double pour technique that uh, there is specificity regarding our work uh, with the tools. I would not like to bypass of the uh, tumor because we can destroy uh, its integrity, uh, the place where we usually usually by uh, meet third. Uh, part you know it is uh, uh, the tumor with invasion it is occupied with the tumor lower 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 and here it stops probably here will uh, bypass the esophages to provide more adequate dissection clamp harmonic. It's part of the water. So we'll remove it. It's a water backwards, a little bit backwards, so that I could see it properly. A water. Uh -huh. Yes, we can see it properly. And we have to approach the layer that we have uh, processed and treated from the other side. So uh, we are going to open it a little bit wider. As soon as there is something interesting, we'll switch to another room. Uh, this is the lymphatic chest uh, or thoracic uh, duct. Uh, 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 we'll take it, we'll remove it. It will be used and started as a sample. We cross the pleura along the Azigas vein, it's a descending part, and there are surgeons who prefer uh, to remove it, but it's ultra radical uh, story. I'm not quite sure uh, that thoracic uh, uh, interventions allow to do this. Uh, we try to move as far from the tumor as possible and to be in the layer. We should be cautious with the vein. It's We can see it properly. How many lymphatic nodes uh, uh, are seen by morphologist after laparoscopic removal? If it's Sergei Vorobyov, who then 25, 30 nodes, usually he found them. Oh, we have uh, um, actually average number, uh, it's 14. Uh, when it's, I mean, uh, uh, distinal, when it's as a phages, of course, it's uh, the number is high because dissection is uh, wide. Uh, let's uh, wear long uh, dissection long than azigas. Clamps do not work properly. I do understand we're somewhere in the middle part, but the upper part gets in my way. Okay, nobody is to blame. So the clamps are in, in their place, and my assistant is, co is quite right. Things go well. So now you can see that there is uh, azigus vein, and uh, you work in the correct layer. So you can see that this is the uh, disadvantage of the double port access or approach because we, I do not have another hole for a retractor to come in and for my assistant to function with it, just um, to hold the lung. 
and why uh, don't you use another port? It's actually because I don't want to traumatize my uh, patient excessively. That's the way I would do it. Now I, I like it very much. It looks perfectly well. Now it looks perfect. It looks wonderful. Harmonic, please. Now I have very good uh, imaging, very good actually view. To what extent uh, morphologist or pathologist will give you the uh, number of uh, lymph nodes? Well, actually, uh, the dissection should come in groups, uh, by groups, but we usually mark our lymph nodes and we usually show who is who. Визуализировать клетчатку и работать вокруг пищевода спокойно. Очень хорошо. Ниже, Женя. Пошли ниже. Ниже. Будем клепировать грудной проток сейчас или попозже. А пососем. Пососем чуть-чуть ниже. Ну вот он всегда вот здесь вот его надо отклипировать и оставить на Ленусе американский инструмент дай мне с носом с носиками носики. так грена маленькая понадобится зеленая да ниже Вместо гемологов используйте греновские клипсы. Ну, это, да? в общем-то, тоже пластиковые клипсы, защелкивающиеся. Они просто, они просто более экономически интересны, чем... Должны все никак вот не, не проберемся к месту диссекции, которую мы должны были вот с противоположной стороны сделать. Вот она аорта наконец-то. Вот она наша диссекция. Слава Богу, мы ее нашли специально к вашему приходу. Видите, да, коллеги? Да, очень четко видно окошечко и переход на противоположную сторону. Да, ну тот, ту сторону-то мы уже выделили. Женя, возьми. Женя. Надо на, на ваш текст тоже реагировать, Жень. Сашка, ну подумайте головой. Мы пересекли, вы видели, грудной проток, и мы пересекли несколько, пере, переваскулярных таких сосудистых хлязей. Конечно, диссекция с противоположной стороны очень сильно облегчила нам работу, как вы видите. Аорта уже выделена фактически. Секунду, не надо ничего забирать. Видно, да, что мы это, это вот я при вас открыл эту зону. Да, видно очень видно там, четко, что голая аорта, голая аорта в стороне. Мы еще не работали, да. И вы аккуратненько забираете все ткани на пищевой. Да, мы, ну просто наша задача сейчас просто соединиться с тем слоем, который мы создали при диссекции с противоположной стороны. Вот здесь вот. Пищеводная артерия. Отсоздай, пожалуйста. Сейчас я покажу отдельный отходящий сосуд. Вот здесь нередко, видите, вот тут он. Уже межреберные артерии видны, потому что мы идем практически по стеночке аорты. Но это не проблема для нас. В данном случае, в данном контексте, ниже. Еще раз повторяю, я не хочу обходить пищевод вот в зоне опухоли, 
что для нас типичным является. Когда мы его здесь обходим, его гораздо проще потом обрабатывать. Гармоник ближе ко мне, Женька. Максимально близко, покажи мне. Сейчас чуть-чуть буквально мы здесь сможем открыться более. И пойдем, будем двигаться чуть дальше. Верхний угол дай мне для инструмента Женя. Сейчас видно, что мы идем по слою, который был создан нами с противоположной стороны. Да, Виктор Анатольевич? У нас нет связи обратно, видимо. Есть, да? есть, есть, есть. А, Простите, хорошо. мы просто немножечко на двух пультах. Нормальное ли очень, качество видео? Очень, скажите? очень хорошее качество видео. Мы видим две картинки. Мы видим картинку вашу внешнюю, маленькую в углу. Мы видим mm -hmm. общую лапароскопическую и торакоскопическую картинку. Уважаемые коллеги, если кто-то сильно устал и есть возможность выйти в холл, выпить чашечку кофе и иметь возможность с новыми силами вновь вернуться к просмотру. Да-да, да, коллеги, не, не стесняйтесь, тут такая довольно нудная часть операции. Сейчас, да? Вадим Григорьевич, мы вернулись к вам, там да. этап холецистектомии, возвращаемся к вам и в ближайшие минут 20-30 мы вас смотрим. Наиболее уставшие коллеги могут выйти попить кофейку, но я уверен, что в ближайшее время они вернутся и до 14 часов 30 минут у нас есть время, да, начнется патоморфологический семинар, у нас есть время смотреть операцию. Отсуздай, пожалуйста. Отсуздай, пожалуйста. Гармоник, давай. 
верхний угол для меня. Что там в зале происходит? Спят усталые игрушки. Книжки спят. Одеяло и подушки ждут ребят. А, я понял. Печалька. отвалимся или нет не могу понять это скоро закончится или нет все никак руками в общем с тех пор как я делаю это скопически стараюсь не больше не это самое. Женька, подожди, это уже, наверное, вывернутая наизнанку, обратная сторона. Назад ответь. Хорошо. Давай, заходи, братан. Пора уже надо отсечь, конечно, наверху этот самый пищевод. Я тогда ее сейчас поставлю. Женя, это, это противоположная сторона, она уже хорошо сделана вся. Все, вот смотрите. Мы просто ее полностью обошли. Виктор Анатольевич, не знаю, видно ли вам сейчас, но мы показываем, что не обходя этот э, пищевод, не беря его на держалку, мы его обошли со всех сторон. Это создай мне, не могу понять, что это за узел, а? Женя, покажи мне вот тут, покажи мне, что это за херня. Это проблема с бронхом. Там что-то есть. Там что-то точно есть. Где-то есть микродефект. Думаю, да. Это точно левый главный бронх. Дефект какой-то там есть. Что-то там было не то. Видел даже? За это трахея бифуркация, но вот выдавливалась воздух вот там. Не знаю. Женя с другой стороны все посмотрел. Огонь. Я пищу этот самый гармоник, давай. Сергеевна, она хочет меня поздравить, но ну, нет необходимости, да, не сейчас. Ну, ребят, в принципе, тут все, все чики-пуки, да, назад. Покажи мне, где, где уровень азигас, Женя, обрезанный азигас, это как раз он и есть, да? Виктор Анатольевич, есть ли у нас трансляция звука в зал? Да, 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 зал вас слышит. Виктор Анатольевич отошел. Я Но понял. мы вас видим и слышим. Я буду стараться. Я понял, то есть мне нужно думать, о чем я говорю. Но, коллеги, вам, тем, кто остался в зале, если таковые имеются, видно, что мы выделили пищевод полностью. Мы его обошли на всем протяжении. Вы видите, да? С обеих сторон. Нет, Женя, оставайся там. Нет, оставайся там. Жень, 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 вот это мне покажи местечко, да. Гармоник Далин. Ниже. А 
что у тебя было на столе, не знаю. Я ничего не выкидывал. Это что-то случайно свалилось. Да, выкидывал. Жень, плохо видно, поближе подъедь. Собственно, мы вот это мы можем сейчас взять и пойти вниз. Значит, где у нас Дмитрий Анатольевич? Надо позвать его, ему сейчас надо будет подтянуть зонт из желудка. Значит, приготовьте мне. Сейчас попробуем его найти. Эндаджи фиолетовый. Не-не-не, не надо, не надо искать. Я говорил про нашего анестезиолога, про Дмитрия Анатольевича. Не про Виктора Анатольевича, не переживайте. Понял. Есть фиолетовый у, у Инны, да. В принципе, вы видите, мы готовы к пересечению. Мы готовы к пересечению пищевода. Примерно вот на этом уровне мы его пересечем. Вы видите, достаточно далеко от опухоли, а потом мы досечем еще участок, когда будем извлекать на шею пищевод. Are there any questions? From the probably there are no questions. As soon as we have finished, we will be able to talk it like this, and there will be the end of the dissection soon. What I need is 60, 60, 60 45 is not enough. I would like to extract it. Let's 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 uh, bypass it by by a sling. Give me a sling, please. Uh, it's it's uh, thick, but I can't. It's not elastic. It's not elastic enough. We'll have to extract the probe from the uh, is, is a features. Uh, so I have to avoid stitching it. Uh, I'll tell you what I need. Maybe ask you a question regarding the approach. As far as uh, uh, I understand, you have draw car for video camera in between in the coastal area, then another one for torocotomy. Uh, so we use this word only when we use expander. And here we have for the port of 3.5 centimeters. Uh, we do not use expanders there. Even we do not use protectors uh, uh, for wounds, uh, and but we need it because we will extract the sample here uh, uh, through it. I don't want to drag it when it's T T T T T three T four. I don't want to, uh, let's say, pull it through the stomach, through the abdominal area. Then the fifth uh, intercostal uh, area and the camera it's in 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 the. Uh, Eighth level. Give me, please, green cassette sixty. Yes, we'll cross. Have you tightened it? Closer, closer. Uh, could you please prepare the kind of a ribbon that will stitch, will stitch it? Uh, we'll use it uh, for the crossed cranial uh, pole and then for the crossed uh, caudal. 
uh, kind of a string uh, so that we could uh, maintain the prolongation of isophagus. Another question. It's not about the technique. Uh, I'm not quite sure what was the uh, why they did not give him new adjuvant therapy. Uh, this patient. Uh, his uh, diagnosis was verified uh, four uh, months ago. Uh, where was uh, he, he? He was traveling. This patient in between different uh, uh, medical facilities in our cities, and uh, was not satisfied. And uh, when radiation radiation started being discussed, uh, he was said that there could be invasion in the water, and they decided that neoadjuvant was not uh, was not uh, feasible. Now we can see that there are no problems with, with aorta aorta in the patients. So I can't understand this, but uh, uh, but uh, let's 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 uh, not quite quite clear why. Uh, there was uh, suspicion, suspicion uh, for invasion into a uh, aorta. Can, could it be a reason uh, for uh, withdrawing or crossing off uh, radiation, radiotherapy? At least it was. Uh, it had been vo voiced out. I can't comment on this. Uh, so this is uh, the tie sling, uh, kind of a strap, in other words. We have to help. Nothing, nothing horrible is happening, but we have to help. Uh, more cautiously, not that abruptly. First, I'll use the apparatus first. I'll navigate it first, and then I will apply the string, the strap. you now may remove it. Uh, we'll, we'll arrange this str strap uh, in more proper position. Uh, so we locate it in such a way uh, that it will stay at the, uh, on the proximal end. Uh, I'll pull uh, the as, as, as a features downwards a little bit. That's not bad, like this. Uh, we have to wait for compression. It's not a complete zone, fine on the f final zone of the resection. But uh, this situation will allow me to continue. I'd say, uh, 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 that's better because previously I have caught the lung. I recommend to use cassette. Uh, not less than 60, otherwise uh, it will leap off or leap out. Uh, uh, this we have a strap which uh, runs to the distal end and the second end uh, will uh, be attached so that we would be able to uh, move uh, and extract the lower part. What is going going up downwards slower the, uh, is, is the phages uh, is exposed. I know. Uh, uh, I'm very pleased by the questions. I'm very happy. Uh, smart people are there in the room on the floor.
could me could you show me where uh, this tumor is attached to uh, uh uh-huh so here it is uh it is uh, attached to the uh, uh, nodes uh, it's under the bronchus uh, intimate bronchus we can see the right uh, great bronchus the ends are sticking out from the uh, bifurcation zone lower downwards and that's how it is attached to and we'll take it in between the vein and uh, bifurcation harmonica please This is not a membrane, it's the anterior uh, part of the intimate uh, bronchus. We are not afraid very mu much. Closer. On this note, I'll take it separately as well. Uh, excuse me, that's not a very proper way of extraction but it will be examined histologically. That's group number 11, the 11th group. Give me a suction, please. And uh, we are close to the end of uh, to the completion of our operation. And so those nodes, uh, they are part of the per uh, lung parenchyma. We will not touch them. They are not specific for this place. Maybe, maybe we'll take them, but not on block, maybe separately. Mm, I'm sure that there is kind of a uh, defect because we can say bulbs, small bulbs. We'll have to have a look what is there. Uh, this is a uh, intimate interim block uh, uh, bronchus. This is the right one, the big one. This is bifurcation. And they're just sticking like this because uh, of the membrane. It's. Uh,
точно видишь, да? Дефект видишь? На той стороне. Дефект в бронхе, скорее всего, есть. Думаю, да. Блин. Сколько у нас там времени? Уже почти два часа. Пора переходить на абдоминальный этап. Ниже покажи. Это группа на узел 8R. R, да, правый. Уважаемые коллеги, если есть вопросы, пожалуйста, не стесняйтесь. У нас здесь есть микрофоны, вы можете обсудить с Вадим Григорьевичем Жень. любой вопрос. Жень, точно есть дефект бронхи. Чудесно бывает. Туда проедет? Вот сюда посмотри. Да. Почему так дистальной части левого главного бронха, знаешь? Поближе подъедь. Да, так вижу уже. Хорошо. Ладно, разберемся. Главное, чтобы этот дефект не разрастался. Так, показывай мне, Жень. Показывай мне. Это? А вот. Нет. Легочный показывает пока все, что нам надо. Туда, в другую сторону, сейчас заберем. Вадим Григорьевич, у нас вопрос к вам из uh, uh, From the Audience. Да, слушаю внимательно. А исследовались ли лимфатические узлы на шее в предоперационном этапе? Имеется в виду медиастиноскопия делалась ли больному или как? Uh, нет, просто УЗИ лимфатических узлов шеи. Нет, мы не делаем больным uh, uh, узи. Как, как вы относитесь к трезональной лимфодисекции? Зональная лимфодисекция – это положительная, это интересная методика, но при выполнении шейного этапа мы заберем те лимфатические узлы, которые будут в зоне, доступны нам. Но я не уверен, что мы это правильно называть, это трехзональная лимфодисекция. Назад, Жень. Вот, поэтому… Опухоль в среднегрудном отделе, даже на границе с нижнегрудным. Я не думаю, что трехзональная диссекция нужна в этом случае. Черт подери. Ну вот, э, Вадим Григорьевич, тут еще, наверное, две различные терминологии. Да? Европейская как бы или э, американо-европейская, да? 2D, 2F и так далее, 3F. И японская, где все подчинено Жаль, именно D1, D2, D3. Убери, убери и скорее работы. даже у вас получается работа в большей степени в соответствии с предложенными японскими алгоритмами, где в зависимости от уровня поражения определяются лимфатические узлы, необходимые для лимфодисекции в объеме D1, D2 и D3, соответственно. То есть делая D2, в принципе, вам в этой ситуации шея не обязательно. Ну, я понимаю идею, понимаете, у нас больной все-таки с Т4, ну, Т3, посмотрим, что там скажут гистологи в итоге, но я понимаю, что чем больше 
узлов мы возьмем, тем более условно-радикальное будет это вмешательство. Но, повторяю еще раз, мы здесь немножко... выскочили из стандарта, потому что мы не делали больному неодевантную лучевую терапию. У нас есть опыт операции после... Жень, плохо убираешь диафрагму. Ага, спасибо. У нас есть опыт операции после неодевантной химиолучевой терапии. Не могу сказать, что это слишком... Ну, что это какая-то тяжкая задача. Просто мы здесь выступаем в качестве вторичного звена, потому что Потому что решение о, о химии лучевой терапии принимается на этапе планирования лечения у пациентов любых, у этого в том числе. И оно принималось в данном случае, исходя из заключения радиологов нашего уважаемого онкологического учреждения. Хотя это, как я слышу, вызвало некоторое неудовлетворение у аудитории. Жень, возьми, пожалуйста, легкое, убери. Ну, с туфером, туфером легкое, убери, Жень. Убери туфером легкое, пожалуйста. Еще чуть-чуть, пожалуйста, Женька, потерпи эту херню. Дай, тебе неудобно. Уважаемые коллеги, пользуясь паузой, мы сейчас смотрим прекрасную работу по лимфодисекции. Я бы хотел сказать несколько слов о наших планах. Соответственно, в 14.30 у нас начнется патоморфологический семинар. До этого за 5 минут мы представим вам следующих пациентов, в частности, пациент, который планируется на бариатрическую операцию. И в 6.30 начнется патоморфологический семинар, в ходе которого мы будем делать небольшие включения в операционную, показывая наиболее интересные этапы бариатрической операции, выполняемой в 3D. Поэтому у нас будет возможность, э, хирургов я призываю не покидать, наш зал, поскольку вы не только получите информацию по самым современным патоморфологическим аспектам клиники рака желудка, рака пищевода, пищевода барета и так далее, но и будете иметь возможность посмотреть этапы лапароскопической операции в 3D по поводу доброкачественного процесса, то есть ожирения, совершенно другие плоскости диссекции, совершенно другие законы. Поэтому я думаю, что это будет интересно сопоставить сегодня целые варианты, скажем, и как работы лигирующих устройств, вы можете сравнить работу гармоника и тандербита, вы можете также сравнить 3D и 2D, вы сможете сравнить доброкачественный и злокачественный процесс, то есть вы сможете сопоставить различные техники и приемы, которые используются реально в живой хирургии сегодня. Конечно, есть небольшие накладки, но вы, давайте с вами сделаем обязательно поправку на то, что это реальная работа в реальной клинике, то есть это наша обычная рутинная работа, и, конечно же, иногда бывают некоторые заминки. Установлен, установлен дренаж, это совершенно очевидно. This is drainage installed, and um, even me being quite far away from the thoracic surgery, it's clear. The abdominal stage, of course, Alexei Mikhailovich Karachun, he has just come here. He has had a half cup of coffee, and he will continue with the abdominal stage. 
and this abdominal stage will not require such intensive lymphodissection like in the previous case, but we cannot say it will not be there at all because there are certain laws of lymphodissection in different localization of the uh, as a fragile tumors. And according to the Japanese classification, we shall show you the evidence later on. Of course, we shall need lymphodissection at least uh, of the fir first, third, and seventh groups. So we shall see somewhat reduced lymphodissection, but although it will be there. This is external picture via two ports. In fact, they performed the whole surgery, which usually there is a quite uh, massive thoracotomy uh, from the right. As far as I understood, there was paratracheal lymph nodes uh, removed. I remember. And that means it's uh, 2S lymphodissection, but not 2M, 2F, excuse me. You should discuss it with Vladimir Grigorievich, in fact. But as I see it, he managed, when it comes to the paratracheal group, he will show, uh, he will show it, but uh, Vladimir Grigorievich, being uh, one of the uh, performers, one of the operators, uh, we shall ask him to uh, comment on that. We shall try to organize all that. We shall try to answer most specific questions, most sort of burning issues. Vladimir Grigorievich, I hope that you are listening to us, but I do hope anyway that you have heard the question about the dissection of paratracheal lymph nodes. And uh, I suppose that I will need your assistance in handling this question. Uh, Vladimir Grigorievich, have you heard the question? We can hear you very well. Oh, it's a miracle. Yes, I heard everything. The paratracheal group, the doctor who asked the question, in fact, meant that he did not see how we removed under the vena cava, uh, just like we do in the pulmonary cancer. Uh, I mean group 4R. Do I understand it correctly? Yes, you do. We have done this dissection without actually uh, turning the lung upwards. And the dissection margin in this case is the nervous vagus from this particular side. Sometimes we do the dissection uh, just like in the um, left lobectomy, but in this case we do not have this necessity to go under the vena cava. And um, probably the question came from a thoracic surgeon. There was an emphysema in the mediastrinum, which worried me. And because it was, it could have been a sign of um, a lesion or j just harmed uh, um, bronchi um, bronchial tree. And that's why endoscopists were summoned here in order to show us. I don't want any additional uh, mediastrinum dissection. Because if there is a defect, it's much better for it to close, to get closed by the mediastrinal uh, adipose tissue. It would be better, but uh, if it uh, then it is uh, fully skeletalized from the trachea. We have taken all, all the lymph nodes with uh, paratracheal, which are along the nervous vagus. Dear colleagues, we have some five, six uh, minutes before the seminar starts, and we have a chance to ask questions to Vadim Grigorievich. So we have more questions. Please do ask. Then second atmos to the se uh, second plura. Second atmos to the plura. Plural cavities must be drained 
into different vessels. Uh, we can actually show the specimen, the tumor specimen, if uh, the colleagues want. Yes, of course they do. We have taken it to the uh, jar via the port that we worked through. This is the um, specimen of the esophagus. You can see how massive and uh, flashy it is. It, this is the distal part of it. This is its proximal part, sutured. And uh, it is all covered in lymph nodes and fibra. Are there any separate lymph nodes which you removed separately? Yes, I marked them, labeled them. And you can demonstrate them to the camera. They have been marked and labeled. Look, and they are in tubes. These are the lymph nodes in, from the areas which are not adjacent to the space specimen. And also you can look at the blood loss volume. You can see how much blood the patient lost. You can see it, yes, can you? And uh, you, uh, we're not using any uh, drapes. No, the drapes do not come in. If you want, I can uh, cut the esophagus. Yes, everybody is actually interested to look at the specimen and actually to ask very difficult questions, to grill you with very difficult questions. I'm happy to take all your questions. Now, I'm dissecting it now. This is it. You can see the mucus. And another question in parallel. Could you take it as well? Uh, good afternoon. Kindly tell me how you assess the surgical clearance in this situation. And uh, out of your experience, wouldn't it be more relevant to sort of remove this specimen with the lesser curve and with the abdominal lymph nodes via one uh, uh, dissection. You know, if you can see the uh, resection margins, they are approximately five centimeters away from the tumor margin. Can you see it? Yes. Formally speaking, we do not have any uh, penetration or ingrowth of the tumor signs, but the eyes of fight here is huge. Look, I'm dissecting it, and uh, the underfight growth is also there in the thickness of the wall. It is uh, very evident in growth. Can you see it? Yes, uh, we can see it perfectly well. Now, I continue. Uh, dissecting and you can see that the margin uh, of the, that the tumor is uh, finished here in this area you can see the upper margin i already came up to the stitch up to the suture that is why i think that i can remove the specimen via the thoracic um, area incision because it will allow me to avoid at the um, possible contamination of the uh, abdominal area. These are resection margins, and uh, we shall widen them some five, four centimeters to uh, both directions, because we are going to remove the cardiac part of the uh, stomach and the lesser or the greater curvature. And also, there will be anastomosis, which, uh, in fact, will also uh, be sutured further on. So it's one of the options. Yes, of course, the doctor will uh, ask the 
Mm. Asked uh, quite a reasonable question, but I actually thought that this specimen must be removed uh, quite drastically. You can see that I retained this uh, the, uh, so the just the surface of it, and at the moment we are going to have uh, the uh, well, and the leaf loads were also removed separately. So I hope that I answered your question. Are you going to take the specimen from me, please? Uh, take the specimen and. Uh, just prepare it for storing. Thank you very much for your uh, for your attention, colleagues. Uh, I'm going to make a short break. Vadim Georgievich, maybe some final question from the floor. Can you show the incision, please? Uh, we actually close it with one uh, suture. Uh, which is inter intermittent, and it's not. It doesn't. It is not accompanied with any symptoms, um, because uh, there were separate stitches previously, and uh, we have one uh, integral stitch which comprises also the adipose tissue, and I suppose that it's uh, quite a uh, quite a good type of closing. So, uh, the, uh, is there any question actually? No, I do not see any uh, hands put up, so I suppose uh, this is exactly where we finish, and we're going to thank you uh, very much. Now uh, I'm going to show you the incision. Can you see it? It's about, it's very short, and I do think the main discussion is about oncology adequacy.